Hello everyone. This is the pre-market report video for today, 4th September 2023 in the new stock market in terms of Nifty and Bank Nifty. As usual, first quickly let's see what happened on Friday. Then following we'll discuss what are all the some important things we need to keep an eye out throughout this week. Afterwards, some important info that happened during the weekends which might potentially impact the price movement today. And finally, we'll discuss the technical aspects for both Nifty and Bank Nifty. So first, quickly about what happened on Friday. I mean, as we discussed in detail in the last two pre-market videos, last Thursday was MSCI index rebalancing and based on Nuoma report, at least over 1 billion US dollars worth of funds outflow from all the index heavyweight stocks. On Thursday and Friday, this was the new information for us, but it may not be the new information for institutional investors. So based on those facts, there was a high chance that they might short at the market on last Wednesday and Thursday. So they did the short covering on Friday, which helped the Nifty to close positive 0.8% by week on week basis after the five weeks of continuous decline. I mean, on Thursday, the trade value was over five times compared to the average normal day trade value. Similarly, on Friday, it was 1.5 times higher compared to the average day value in both DII and FII. I mean, both of them turned as net buyers. FII net bought for 490 crore rupees, while DII net bought for near 2300 crore rupees. So after the day of rebalancing, both of them ended up in net buying with an increased volume. Thus, the only explanation might be short covering. In addition, there were a couple of positive macros. We might know now Indian GDP grown up by 7.8% in April-June quarter, which was faster than all major G20 countries. That's the first positive macro. The second very important positive one was manufacturing PMI data. Here, Nifty was slight positive on Friday morning, but when the manufacturing PMI data was released, it becomes super positive. Here, you may ask me why market reacting to some manufacturing PMI and some industrial growth data and it didn't react at all for some. To answer that question, generally macro data releasing in September, December, March and June are more important and it will have a direct impact on stock price movement than that released in the other months. Again, why? because these are the first available actual mathematical data that we can use to intercept the potential demand for that particular sector. For example, last week in the industrial growth data, we found that power sector did the worst, had the negative growth. Immediately next day, it was the major sector loser. I mean, in other months, they do have the original data for that particular stock itself, like quarterly results or the CEO's future guidance, etc. But for those four months, we don't have that luxury and that's why it's very impactful on those months. Anyway, on Friday, India's manufacturing PMI came as 58.6, which was really a good number. Thus, Nifty, after hitting 19,250 in one single session, Nifty reclaimed and moved above 19,400. Except pharma, all other sectoral indices ended in the green with power, metal, auto, oil and gas and bank up by 1 to 2.7 percent. Overall, the advanced second ratio was 1.44. Then moving to US, Bureau of Labor Statistics released lot of US jobs data. In that, unemployment rate increased to 3.8 percent against expectation of just 3.5 percent. In addition, the number of jobs added last month came as 1,87,000. Here, this number was above expectation, but it was way less than the historical data. Basically, it's a bad macro data, but again, it's good for stock market. So, over 93%, now the Fed probability tool predicts that Fed will pause the interest rate hike in the next upcoming FOMC meeting on September 20. All these made the US market super bullish and traded significantly higher, but in the end, profit booking made it to close near flat. I mean, tonight US market will be on holiday, so it's a long weekend for them and it's obvious nobody wants to carry their position. Anyway, Dow Jones increased 0.33%, S&P funded up marginally 0.18% and Nasdaq closed near absolute flat. 
Here, Nasdaq gains were mainly trimmed by Tesla as it lost over 5% since they again reduced the Model 3 and Model Y per unit price. And US VIX further reduced from 13.5 to just around 13. Regarding oil, Category 3 hurricane drop in US oil inventories all made it again to increase further 2.5%. On Saturday, WT crude oil closed at 86 US dollars per barrel and Brent crude oil closed at 89 US dollars per barrel. Then about Indian ADR, if required, please pause and have a look. All closed positive, but I think it's all reflecting the Friday's Indian market price moment. So we can consider this as slight positive. In case of GIF Nifty, it closed at 19,547. At present, based on Friday's trading, it got the premium of just 60 points. Usually in the month beginning, it will have at least 9,200 points premium. So based on that, it's indicating the flat opening. So that's what happened on Friday and Saturday morning. Moving on, according to me, there are only two important things we need to keep an eye out. First one on Wednesday, US service PMI data since that will directly affect our IT stocks. Second, oil price since at present it's trading close to 90 US dollars per barrel. Further increase in the price either will deteriorate the India's forex reserves or will depreciate the rupee further. Then regarding sector stock specific, first about Reliance, on Friday night in GDR, it closed 0.5% negative. Here I don't know why, but just for info. However, during weekend, Indian government reduced the windfall tax. For petroleum crude, government reduced from 7,100 rupees per ton to 6,700 rupees per ton. And in case of diesel, from 6 rupees to 5.5 rupees. Here, all these are not major reduction, so not sure about the impact. Then second, Kotak Mahindra Bank CEO Uday Kotak resigned from his CEO position. Here his contract will be expired in December, but before four months itself, he resigned from the position due to family concerns. So those impact we can see in Kotak Mahindra Bank. Third, during weekend, most of the automobile companies released their August month sales data. Except Tata Motors, most of them posted positive numbers, especially M&M and Maruti. Since Maruti already shot up over 3% on Friday, we might see some positivity at least on M&M. As a summary, US market closed marginally positive and tonight it will be closed. At present, Gift Nifty is indicating a flat opening. Let's see. Then about the things to look out, it just lots of European Central Bank persons interview is due tonight. Coming to technical, Nifty forms a opening long green Marubosu candle with a short upper shadow. It indicates how strong the support is at 19,250 and also there is no sellers at those level. However, the short upper shadow denotes the resistance around 19,400. Anyway, after the whole week of resistance at 21 day exponential moving average, finally Nifty had the breakout. Even on weekly basis, after 5 red candle, Nifty forms the inverted hammer pattern. Here, both of them were bullish reversal indicators. So now, closing and sustaining above 19,500 will push the Nifty towards 19,800. I mean, the short term trend of Nifty has turned up and we may expect further upside in the short term. Regarding the range for the week, 19,250 to 19,600 level. In case of Bank Nifty, it forms very close to bullish engulfing pattern. And also, it held on to its 20-week moving average support level, 44,144. So, we might expect the pullback to continue over this week as well. In addition, daily and hourly momentum indicator has a positive crossover, which is a buy signal. So, I expect Bank Nifty to target the levels of 45,000 from a short-term perspective. Moving on, about options open interest, first for Nifty, lot of new put options were added at 19,300 and it is the maximum nearby put option open interest strike, hence 19,300 is the support to look out for. Then huge short straddle at 90,400 and some significant put options at 90,500. Hence the next two point 19,600, it's the call option open interest with minimum put option addition. Hence 19,600 is the immediate resistance to break. Then in case of Bank Nifty, 44,500 got the significant short straddle. Then on the downside, 44,000 got the maximum and new put option open interest addition. Hence, 44,000 is the support to look out for. 
Similarly, on the higher side, 45,000 is the maximum call option open interest with minimum put option addition. Hence, 45,000 is the resistance to break. So, that's all in this video. Hope you all got some useful information. Please consider subscribing the channel and liking the video. So, it will help me beat the YouTube algorithm and also motivate me to do more. Please don't make any investigation based on this as a matter of SEBI registered advisor. I am doing this for my and viewers educational purpose only. Thanks for watching.